rejected has become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. So hello, everyone, and welcome to Monday. As we begin a whole new week of Liturgy of the Word, it is an honor to be with you each day. And I want to thank all the different people who get involved in all this, and Logan and Dan, and I think Joyce today is the reader, but all the different readers, all the different people involved in all this. It, it, it is uh, um, Jerry, uh, Holly, and and uh, uh, and uh, Joyce uh, gets involved with all this with music and stuff too. So a lot of people get involved. I just want you to know there's so many people that do all this uh, together. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. Let's ask God for his wonderful, tender, indispensable mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. You're the truth. Christ, have mercy. And you are the life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next, she bore his brother Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offerings, but on Cain and his offerings he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your head. But if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is towards you, yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out in the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? He answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord then said, What have you done? Listen to your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore you shall be banned from the soil that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer give you its produce. You should become a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear, since you have not banished me from the soil, and I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth. Anyone may kill me at the sight. Not so, the Lord said to him. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. So the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone should kill him at sight. Adam again had relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son whom she called Seth. 
God has granted me more offspring in place of Abel, she said, because Cain slew him. The word of the Lord. Offer to God the sacrifice of God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. Offer to God a sacrifice of Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? Against your mother's son you spread rumors. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees came forward and began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. He sighed from the depths of his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Amen, I say to you, no sign will be given it and given to this generation. And he left them, got into the boat again, and went off to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, one author writes this. There are a few things in the Gospel that I appreciate more than when Jesus exhibits his full humanity. And I would agree with all that. All throughout Jesus' public life, especially in the Gospel of Mark, by the way, he shows us uh, um, he's totally, completely engaged in the human experience. I, I think mostly you and I struggle with his humanity. I, I don't think we struggle with his, his divinity, which was the early church. I think we struggle a lot with his humanity because we can't imagine, we can't wrap our brain around the fact that God actually did become one of us. But we see it all the time. Um, he weeps at the death of his great friend Lazarus. There is his fear and anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane and is crying out in pain from the cross. All these are signs. And, 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 and by the way, Friday, the groaning that he does because of the darkness that he sees because of the fall. All these things are sign of, signs of Jesus embracing our human experience completely. Uh, now, he heals a deaf man. He feeds the 4,000. Uh, and then now the Pharisees come forward and they look for a sign. And then Jesus says, no sign will be given them because they're looking for religion without faith, religion without trust, religion without risk. They always wanted to be something that gives them a soft landing in some fashion. And we kind of know it's not like that. The whole point of religion 
is for us to enter in this relationship with Jesus and live as he does. Now, I want to share with you that miracles do not create faith. Did you hear that? Miracles do not create faith. The reason Jesus performed miracles was to point to himself and then to point to the Father. Now, you could see the miracles, the Pharisees saw them, didn't touch them at all because of their hardness of heart. But if you open your heart to the miracles, then the next thing you do is you go to Jesus and look to him, and he becomes the one who transforms us and, and begins to make us new. And we have this transformation in our lives. The Pharisees didn't grasp any of that. And Jesus sighs from the very depths of his heart. Now listen to uh, Father uh, uh, um, uh, Harrington and his commentary on Mark talking about this. I think it's the most direct I've ever read about this particular gospel. And he writes, The Pharisees may have seen the miracles of Jesus, but they are truly outside, and so they don't understand. Truly, which literally means amen, I say to you, as emphasis and solemnity to what follows, which is found exclusively in the sayings of Jesus. No sign will be given. The Greek formula is, in fact, a strong negation of the Pharisees and actually says, literally, literally, it says, may I die if God grants this generation a sign. Wow. The refusal could not be more absolute. Amazing. Now, Jesus' deep sigh, his groaning, if you will, resonates with the disciples of every age. Men and women who have uh, endured questioning, harassment, attacks, all kinds of different things. And it gives us the courage to persevere as being followers of Jesus. Allow me to quote from you uh, uh, from the letter of James, this whole idea of perseverance, when he says, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and let perseverance be perfect, so that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. So Jesus gets us. He understands the struggles and difficulties that we had. He went through the exact same things himself. When we feel exhausted and tired and, 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 and without words, we can, we, we can have um, some consolation that this Jesus understands everything that we're going through. He went all through it himself, and he will never, ever abandon us. So here is my question for you today to ponder. When you get frustrated and hurt and angry, do you let God see it? Do you let God in there to heal it? God bless you. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again tomorrow.